God is good. Today, guys, I want to talk about a game that is so special to so many people that you see it referenced everywhere you look. It was a great, awesome RPG, an MMO that was available on the PlayStation 2 back when console MMOs were hardly a thing. As far as I'm aware, the only other console MMO at that time was Final Fantasy XI, and the game I'm talking about, of course, is EverQuest Online Adventures, better known as EQOA. So this was a 3D fantasy, massively multiplayer online role-playing game, and it was on the PlayStation 2. Now, you had to have special hardware to connect to the internet, and it was shut down in 2012 in March, and it operated for nine years before it came to that point. So it even got an expansion pack called Frontiers that added a playable race, which was the Ogre, and it also added a new class, the Alchemist, and lots of quest items and stuff like that. Now, the EverQuest Online Adventures actually took place in Norath, but 500 years prior to the original EverQuest. It was called the Age of Adventure, and it had a lot of familiar places in it, so the fans of EverQuest could enjoy areas that they were familiar with, but also uh, all explained within the lore. The classes in the game were the Cleric, the Druid, the Shaman, Enchanter, Wizard, Alchemist, Necro, Magician, Bard, Ranger, Rogue, Monk, Paladin, Shadow Knight, and Warrior, and you could be a Dwarf, you could be an Elf, a Dark Elf, a Human, a Gnome, Troll, Ogre, Barbarian, Erudite, and, and Halfway. This was a game released by Sony Online Entertainment back in 2003, at least in North America, and then later that year they released the expansion that I just mentioned called Frontiers. There were also lots of free content updates uh, because they never, that was, that was the only expansion ever released for the game. Now the former senior producer Clint Worley said that the getting this game on the PS2 was rough from the start. Uh, his exact words were early on with the PlayStation 2, EQOA faced a lot of challenges. The whole online gaming with the PlayStation 2 console was an admirable attempt, but it was still ahead of its time. So, what the problem was that consoles really just weren't designed for connecting to the internet, right? Um, the PlayStation 2 was a was a good console for its time. As a matter of fact, it's, it's heralded as one of the best consoles of all time. But, it just wasn't like you could just plug into the internet. You had to get special hardware to do that, which meant additional costs. So, just to put it into perspective, Perspective, you had to own a PS2. You had to get a copy of EQOA. You had to have at least an 8 megabyte memory card. You had to find and install a network adapter, which that wasn't easy. They weren't like super available, right? Uh, they weren't something that was flying off the shelf or anything like that at that time. So uh, even getting your hands on one of these was a process, an adventure, or a quest, so to speak, just for itself. And then you had to communicate, right? You had to be able to talk to people. So that meant you had to get a PS2 USB keyboard, right? So, otherwise you were stuck using the in-game chat macro type system that, let's be honest, not going to work in most scenarios, especially for a real conversation or real communication. So, needless to say, it was a limited audience that actually got to enjoy this game. Uh, basically, from the information that I've been able to dig up, it looks like it never got over 50,000 subscribers. And also worth mentioning that all the players from the European servers were actually shut down much earlier than North American servers, they shut down the European servers in 2006, which hurt the game's player base even more. Now, from the beginning, they set this up to be 500 years before EverQuest because they were hoping that some of the fans of EverQuest would find this as another adventure, another Norath experience to play. Because at that time, EverQuest was definitely kicking strong. Keep in mind, this is pre-World of Warcraft, so having hundreds of thousands of subscribers at, in, at that time was a very big deal, and it, I would argue it's still a big deal even today. Now, like it or hate it, that with the limitations of being on the PS2 and a console, EverQuest Online Adventures was a little bit more casual than it, than its counterpart on the PC. But at the same time, I have to also say that being a little bit more casual back then would definitely be seen quite unforgiving today. As a quote from the developers, the core design philosophy behind it was to get in and out and have fun in it in under 20 minutes or less. And the combat itself was definitely faster and even allowed for a little bit more positional strategy than in the original EverQuest. 
So basically the game worked like this. You logged in, you went out, you fought stuff, you looted stuff, you leveled up. The requests, you could even turn your character into a werewolf, but this was an old school MMO. So most of your time is actually spent grinding and just grouping up, camping and leveling up. Man, those were the good old days. But what I always find so interesting is that even back then, even with the constraints of the PS2, this was a seamless world, right? It was the continent of Tunaria and it was wide open and awesome and really cool and for the PS2, man, I, I gotta say, in my opinion, I think these graphics look really cool. And I'm super displeased that this game never saw a PC release. If it did, it, might, it would probably exist in some form or another today, or at least that's the way I feel. Plus, it would have been more popular, probably would have lasted a little longer. I mean, look at how long Final Fantasy XI lasted on the PS2. There were people still playing on the PS2 after Final Fantasy XI was released on the Xbox 360. It was... There was still a lot, a considerable, a crazy amount of people still playing Final Fantasy XI at that time on the PS2. And I think EverQuest Online Adventures could have had a similar type experience all the way up until it just wasn't possible anymore. And then they could have transferred a, a large portion of those players into the PC version had there ever been a PC version. Now we're going to talk a little bit here in a second about a revival project for EverQuest Online Adventures, which will obviously be on the PC. We're going to get to that in a minute. Another thing I want to talk about EverQuest Online Adventures is it was known for lessening EverQuest, at least at that time, death penalty. Uh, basically, it just took some money away from the player, and you got an XP debt for each demise, which is definitely a softer blow than corpse runs and dropping your stuff on your on your on your corpse. Let's talk a little bit about that expansion, though. It's called Frontiers. It actually came out later in 2003. So it came out pretty fast, but it was interesting. Because the PS2 didn't even have a hard drive, I mean, you're dealing with eight megabytes on a memory card. So what they had to do is it was a DVD that you had to have, it was required to do this new expansion content and go to their areas and everything. So that meant that you were swapping out discs during play, <laughs> which is crazy to think about for an MMO. But it did add a lot to the game. An additional race, a class, qu new quests, uh, increase the level cap even from 50 to 60, and, and new areas to explore. You could customize your, your character with class masteries. You could go out and purchase new abilities or even a master class version of your standard class. Now, for a little while, there was a rumor of them doing a second expansion, but obviously that did not happen. Now, a quote from SOE states, a lot of the team that would have worked on that has moved on to other projects. That was from Clint Worley. And so instead, the team just kept putting out updates on a semi-regular basis, and there was a lot of updates, actually. Beyond that, it actually retained a pretty stable subscriber base over the years and surviving almost right under a decade with only one expansion and the expansion released in the same year as the game is pretty darn impressive. So let's get into the fact of the game getting any sort of revival, okay? Because there's so many people out there who would love to play it for the first time because they knew about it and they didn't get to get it for, I mean, I just went through lots of reasons why it'd be difficult to even play this game, okay? So a lot of people would have liked to, didn't get to, a lot of people played it would love to revisit it and replay it again for, even if it's just for nostalgia's sake so let's talk about that so it's difficult why because this was a ps2 game the hardware the game being available in that particular form getting the coding for it you would think it would be actually impossible the good news is is that it is that somebody is trying so I'm going to put a link down below if you want to check that out. And I'm going to talk a little bit about it. So it's it's known as EverQuest Online Adventures Return Home. It's an emulation project. And last update I could find was back in December. And I can only hope that it's still going. But so far from what I've heard, there are, is combat in the latest version of the emulator. But it is a very small team. And they have a lot of the game left to emulate. So it's still quite a ways from release. They're predicting four to five years. Fortunately, if you want to help, Help, there's a lot you can do even if you aren't a coder or, or programmer or anything like that they're looking for people who remember placement of enemies and trying to replicate the game's maps accurately so they're not accepting any money for the game for the emulator and it seems like most of the game is uh, most of the development of this emulator is running off of Facebook at this time for communication purposes but no matter how you spin it it's nice to know that somebody or 
or some group of people is trying to get this game in a playable state at all. There is zero ways to play this game right now. And that's always sad with an MMO because it's a world. It was a, a whole world created. And it's almost like when, the, when, when they sunset and they're gone, it's almost like if Earth just vanished and a few people just happened to be on a couple other planets and they got to talk about it. But absolutely nobody could actually do any more than maybe watch a couple of videos of it. There's no way to experience all the things that the people talk about. There's no way to show people. There's no way to go back and look at it again. Uh, it's just gone. Poof. And that's uh, very sad. It's very, very difficult to wrap your mind around it unless it's happened to you in one of your favorite or, or loved MMOs and then it's just gone. So I think these emulation projects, especially for these sunsetted games, is very important. You're preserving something. It's it's a tangible world, a virtual world that is gone now. So it's very nice uh, anytime that we can experience that and uh, I love that somebody is doing that and, and I know it means a lot to a lot of people. So guys, that's all I got. I just wanted to kind of do a video kind of talking about EverQuest Online Adventures, how cool it was. Now, if you're new here, please consider subscribing to the channel. This is what we do here. We talk about old school MMO RPGs, sunsetted ones, ones that are still active, as well as upcoming games that hold the values of the old school games, because we do have options like that, such as Pantheon, Rise of the Fallen, my favorite pick. But we have lots of different options. In the future, games are in the works that are going to kind of revive that old school spirit of MMORPGs. Guys, hope you enjoyed the video today, and until next time, God bless, and happy gaming. Listen to what I say. I've been making videos all day. My friends all say I'm It's a video buffet. You can even hit replay. But please just subscribe. I can't even describe. Being part of my tribe, I'll even offer you a prize, but just please just subscribe, and hit the bell notification too.